come on out to Brown Mountain Bottle Works at 115 East Union Street in Morganton, North Carolina. The place to be for great craft beer. Browse their shelves filled with hundreds of craft beer selections. Relax and enjoy one of their eight draft taps. Show your love for the store with their logo t-shirts, hats, and glassware. Want to see what they have in stock 24 hours a day? Check out their website at www.brownmountainbottleworks.com. We'll see you there. Hi, I'm Glenn, Dave's Blind and Campbell, NC Beer Guys, and welcome to another episode of NC Beer Buzz. If you know anything about the NC Beer Guys, you know we love to tell a success story. And a couple years ago, we found out all about what kombucha was when this guy, Towns Moser, introduced us to the concept, and we were brand new in his little facility there, trying to figure out what he was doing over there and what in the world he was brewing. And then, of course, he was also doing some beer. But he was originally mostly a tea guy, right? A brew guy. Yeah, we we're uh, all about fermentation, but commercially we went with kombucha right. first. Um, and was, we were in before you had just started doing a couple of beers. Right. Yeah, so uh, yeah, we started out um, super small. Originally, just kombucha focused. Uh -huh. um, we were home brewing beers, meads, you know, wines, any type of fermentation uh, we were down with. Even kimchi and things like that, right. other, other different right. foods. Um, so and fermentation was just our passion. And you were in that facility for what? We were there for four and a half years. Four, okay, See, I didn't realize that at all. Yeah, so uh, we were there for four and a half years and I uh, originally started out with a 200 gallon fermenter, a couple sinks, and, uh, and, and pretty much the, our focus was wholesale kombucha. Mm -hmm. um, no retail space uh, initially. Uh, I mean, I started out and with... And then we eventually did have that little tap area right in the front. Right, so... we were, you kind of carved out of your existing space. Exactly. So that was our office space originally. And then we we're like, well, you know, if we knock down this wall, um, it's already con air conditioned. And, uh, you know, we can have at least some type of retail right. presence. Originally, but, it was just kombucha. It was three taps. I started saying, and 20 people filled it up. Oh, yeah. Right, 20 I mean, people was packed. Yeah. Right, so right. it was super small. Um, but you know, it, it, it gave us another outlet and it, it got people to uh, experience our place where everything was made. There was a window uh, to see in uh -huh. the back, so uh -huh. it was pretty transparent. And right. uh, just, um, yeah, just, uh, you know, that was our first home. Um, that was, uh, I guess, give you a little timeline real quick. Um, sold our first bottle of kombucha in uh, December 20th of 2011. And then uh, April of 2012, we found our home in uh, the original spot in South End. Right. And uh, and then um, let's see, then 13 January of 13 we became certified organic. Uh, in the kombucha market, being certified organic is kind of a staple. Yeah, you um, kind of got to have that. Kind of got to have that in that market, um, and it was easy for us because we were already doing everything mm -hmm. organically. That was our goal from the from you the get-go. You just had to reach out and apply for the stamp. And yeah, the approval. yeah, and we had to also prove a lot of scientific evidence behind our culture to actually get our culture certified organic because we don't buy our culture from any place uh -huh. it's our culture we raise it up we've been maintaining it for about 10 uh -huh. years um, and uh, we manipulate it in different ways to uh, produce different products um, so that was our main focus originally again fermentation overall was the overarching mm -hmm. love and uh, so in January of 13 we became certified organic and then September of 13 we became a full-on microbrewery um, producing organic beers and uh, again started really small on that as well um, and then you know, it, did the market drive you there or did you did your own inherent interest it was both it was uh, it was both in the fact of we were already fermenting stuff at home but not on site mm -hmm. and uh, we had a passion for overall fermentation so it was one of those things where it was easy well, it wasn't, wasn't easy, but uh, we did it. Easy in your mind to make the transition, I'm saying. Right, right. yeah. Right. No, not easy to do. Yeah, it was, it was right. always in the back of our mind. We just wanted to make sure that each of our products were well thought out and they had the quality to them before mm -hmm. we went to market. Right. Um, so, again, even with that, we were very small. We started out with 15-gallon little system. Mm -hmm. um, it was our homebrew system. Yeah. And... Uh, and, and did that for a couple of weeks uh, and then you know really started hacking around and finding a system and we got a used system from 603 brewery out of New Hampshire 
Yeah. Uh, raise up to them. Appreciate Shout it, out guys. 603. 603. We wouldn't be where we were without them. Yeah, so we uh, got their system. They had only used it for about two months. It was a Portland Kettle Works three and a half barrel system. Okay. And then we were double batching into seven barrel fermenters. And, uh, and uh, that kind of got our start. We, we wanted to make sure that we were producing a good product, no matter if it was 15 gallons, three barrels, seven the, barrels, the, the quality whatever. had to be prime. Yeah, we didn't want to, you know, and I'm, you know, we wanted to have it so that any experience with our products was a positive one. Right. Um, word of mouth is, was and still is our biggest advertising. Um, and uh, as you can tell in the tap room. But uh, when did, well, before we get to this, when did yeah. you know after that, that we're going to have to step up and do something big? Was so, it quick? well, from the beginning at our old spot, uh, the original spot was 2,400 square feet, and then when we started doing a little bit more beer, when we got the Portland Kettle Works system from 603 Brewery, uh -huh. we went to 5,000 square feet. We got the next unit over and, and took down a pallet space wall and cleared out the tap room okay. a little bit more. Right. Um, and, and so you had 5,000 square feet over <clears throat> 5,000 square end. feet. In the end, there there was no patio space. Uh, it was a shared parking lot with other... It was pretty much just like a... Uh, a classy probably not that classy strip mall mm -hmm. and um it was just a you know people when we first moved in they're like what the hell are you doing like what's going on right, you're fine. um but it was a uh it was a low risk operation uh -huh. uh, you know it was a nice incubator in the fact of you know nailing down formulas product marketing employees um so after three years there so yeah so um back to the timeline yeah the old timeline so uh of uh, let's see, September of thirteen, we became a microbrewery, and then uh, September of, or uh, excuse me, April of fourteen, we knocked down the wall. We go uh, to five thousand. Go feet. to five thousand, and then rocked that out for two years, and uh, found I, I pretty much became a real estate agent for two years. Just I knew looking that, at options. Yeah, and going back to what you were saying earlier, I knew that that wasn't the end result mm -hmm. at the old spot. No patio. Very. Right, it was a little band-aid for a while. It was a band-aid for sure. And um, but uh, you know we tried to make it as homey and as quaint as we could, and uh, having a good product, good customer service, and uh, and and we wanted to build on that. So that's what we did originally. Um, and we've been here, and what do we wind up being capacity wise? Yeah, so now at our new spot, it's kind of the next. And we are at 3000 South Tryon. Yep, 3000 South Tryon, uh, just right on Main Tryon. And we've area. been here only a few months. We've been here since September okay. uh, 11th, or September right. 10th is when we opened. Okay. Um, that was our grand opening here. Uh, we had the building uh, for a year prior. Um, we were in, you know, Charlotte, Charlotte's uh, Charlotte's process is a little lengthy, and getting you permits, mean the zoning, and the permitting, zoning, installation, and, yeah. you know, I'll get all that going. Yeah, so that took a while, um, and then uh, once we got the space, um, I kind of envisioned and designed the tap room and all the production area and all mm -hmm. that stuff. Um, so a lot of a lot of nights sitting around envisioning the place. Uh, we sourced all the the wood for all the tables, the bars. From North Carolina, um, shout out to Bernie. Bernie's a good good man up in the mountains. He's got a little shed up there, and he's got some great cuts of wood. Oh, okay. And uh, went up there with a flatbed, picked those up, came back down here, finished them, uh, and uh, me and three other guys built the whole tap room. Um, so uh, really proud to uh, have North Carolina wood in in there, and uh, people seem to be enjoying it. That's great. And what's our capacity square footage? What are you doing square footage? What are we talking about? 5,000 square feet? Yes, yeah, so we went from, we, we did we did a pretty good, pretty big jump. Yeah, pretty big jump. Um, we were pretty amazed when we drove up. There yeah, so at our old spot, it was 5,000 square feet. And when we moved in there about four, about five years ago now, um, it was a little bit of a rough area. Sycamore hadn't showed up. Wooden Robot hadn't showed up. Uh, Triple C and us were mm -hmm. within a couple months of each other, so it was kind of uncharted territory. Now it's a little that different over there. Right, totally changed. And so we um, becoming kind of a real estate agent, if you will, for a couple of years. I, uh, this is the next wave. So we got in here a little bit low on rent, and uh, we're really excited about it. It's thirty-one thousand square feet. Right. So we, you know, what six uh, xed our old spot, uh -huh. um, and. Uh, Really fortunate to find the spot, great landlord, and uh, just really blessed to be here. So that's just, great. Yeah, just really. And basically, we're doing the same stuff we were doing, and with a lot more 
capacity. Right. Yep. We so uh, the, the size didn't change a lot of what you do. The scope did not, but the variety and capacity did. And your options obviously changed. Yes. How to get the end product to the end product. Right. So at the old spot, we were at 14 taps, I believe, and now we're at 29 taps. 28 of them we uh, are made in house. We have a, we do have a wine permit as well, so we have a champagne on draft. Right. You know, just something different, mm -hmm. and uh, we also have some ciders as well in cans. Right. Um, but every uh, all the other 29 are all ours. Um, we have. A uh, vast variety of things. We've got our kombucha, which is a non-alcoholic product, fermented yep. uh, beverage, uh, high in B vitamins. If you beer people don't know that kombucha brewed, you need to get, you need to try and sample that. And yeah, that try it out, and uh, if anything, it will clean your palate for the next beer. Well, that's right. That's not the only reason to drink it, but that's a reason. Yeah, and that was one thing is, is you know, people come in, um, they might be more acquainted with beers, and. Uh, they come in, have a beer or two, and then we have this whole kombucha wall, and they're like, well, you know, what is kombucha? What is that all about? Right. They try some, their eyes light up, and they leave with a growler of that. Uh -huh. So it's a nice little uh, window into right. another fermented beverage. That's, well, it also, uh, you were kind of at the point where the market was heading toward the sour end of the spectrum for sure. beer, yep. and kombucha kind of goes in that direction some. Yeah, definitely. So our palates were already geared up and ready for sour uh -huh. beers, and... Uh, we have uh, we we've won some pretty good awards for our burn down for what it's our sour brown ale. It's okay. our first sour brown that we ever made. Originally. Do I have it here yet or not? Uh, burn down for what is right here, sir. Okay. Um, it won uh, best organic sour beer in the country last year. It won gold medal at the beer awards our uh, beer army uh, mm -hmm. event the yeah, other right. other week, and then it just won gold medal at the best of craft beer awards out in Oregon. So. Um, real proud of that one. Uh, we uh, very nice. A brown sour. Brown sour. It's got. It doesn't have cherries in it, but it has notes of cherries, and uh, it's uh, it's one of my favorite beers that we have. Uh, Dave behind the camera will want to have some of this. It yeah, will so surprise you. It's yeah. It it, it does, and uh, it's it. You know, uh, shout out to Laura Salazar. It tastes a bit like uh, La Folie, um, and uh, yeah, we're real proud of it. So well, that's great. So what has been the, uh, let's say, the challenge to the growth? Is it too much too fast? There's some management issues. I mean, yeah, it's, it's it, tough. Yeah, I mean, that's one thing that we wanted to be pretty diligent about was we didn't want to be pumping out too much beer um, where it sits or not enough beer where people are mad. So it's one of these mm -hmm. balancing acts. Finding your place. And at our old spot, it was highly inefficient, small, cookie cutter had to it was pretty much like uh, like Jenga every day you know so um, we had a list running for two and a half three years of anything that we did not want or want to deal with whenever we grew up or we we got the new this, space we're fix this issue. That, yeah that was the we're thing address this in our next life exactly so um, we uh, tried to go through that list and this place really checked off most of it um, there's really not much that it didn't check off, and uh, we're we're super super happy to have it, man. It's uh, we're we're uh, locked in for a long-term lease here, and uh, my prediction in the next three years we'll be right back in the thick of it, just as we were at the old spot. Great, great. Yeah. Thank you for having us in. Yeah, of course. We appreciate it. Yes, great. sir. It's good to see you. Until next time, this is David Beer and Charlotte, fancy beer guys, and remind you to drink local and keep your beer dollars in North Carolina.